everyone. This is Dr. Katie Woodley. We're getting started a little bit late just because we had a fun morning. Uh, so if anyone here has cats, you will understand. Uh, walked into my office and it was like vomit fest. All over the chair, all over the carpet. Oh, cats, the joys, the joys of having cats. So I'm going to give some people, hey, Aaron, am I saying that right? McWhippet, thanks for joining us this morning. So once again, I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. This is our weekly COVID critters and coffee update. It is May 30th. So we're almost to June, which is crazy. I can't even believe that we're almost to June. So quick update on coronavirus and pets because that's why we started this. So there are no new cases in pets, which is great news. So super happy about that. We do still need to be very careful with, if we contract coronavirus, definitely with our kitty cats, they are more likely to be silent carriers of it potentially. So they are the ones that can test positive. Some dogs are testing positive. Cats are more likely to become sick from the coronavirus. As we've talked about in the past, cats can, coronaviruses are, they can actually act on cats and be, cats are more sensitive to coronavirus. So feline infectious peritonitis is a disease and typically a deadly disease for cats that they can get and that's a coronavirus. Different type, it's not the COVID-19 that we're seeing right now that's creating havoc amongst people and causing illness, but be careful. So if you do contract coronavirus and you do have cats, just be careful. You don't wanna be cuddling them really close to your face. You wanna be wearing a mask around them if you can. Um, if you're sneezing, coughing, coughing into your, to your arm, your shoulder, so that way you're not spreading that virus. But what I'm really excited about, let me find my little prop. I don't know where it went. Oh, here it is. Okay. Sorry. We had some difficulties this morning. Who here has cats, by the way? Uh, thumbs up, wave, heart, if you have cats in your house. So we kind of had some technical difficulties. Awesome. Yes. Technical difficulties. Not really, but... Uh, Cats like to vomit sometimes and walked into my office and they had a party last night with vomit. So super in my chair, not cool, but we had to clean that up. So that's why we're, we're getting started a little bit later. But what we're gonna do, let's talk about this. Does anyone recognize what this thing is? Sucks, I hate these things. So found this on my walk this morning, not hard to find because everyone in my neighborhood likes to spray with pesticides. Guess what time of year it is? It is spring. And what's crazy is that US Wildlife Services actually said that we as homeowners in the US, we have 10 times the amount of chemicals on our lawn as a farmer sprays on their crops. Why is that? That is insane. Yes, cats run the house, Erin. Totally agree. So why is that important to, to know? For one, okay, yes, we like having green yards. We like having weed-free yards. We like making maintenance super easy for ourselves, right? That's nice. That's a nice world to live in. However, we need to look at the fact that 60% of pets are developing cancer or will develop cancer at some point in their life. And this is a big factor and it's a big factor for people too. So not only is it toxic to our pets, it's toxic to our health. So there are numerous studies that have showcased how Roundup, so glyphosate, is linked to brain tumors in people. And guess what? My dog just passed away because of a brain tumor. And this is not hard to find around our neighborhood. So think about that. What are the chemicals that your pets are coming into contact with? Is that playing a part in their disease, their wellness, their health, their 
their illnesses. Yes, it will. It is one component. And remember, cancer is multifactorial. So we just did a cancer webinar the other night and went through all the different predisposing factors and risk factors for cancer and the ways that pets can develop disease, cancer. There is a progression. And so what pesticides also can do is they can sit in fat tissue. So if you have an overweight pet, they are at a higher risk of developing disease and cancer. And the reason why is that fat doesn't just sit there. It's not just creating extra pressure on the bones, the joints. It actually releases pro-inflammatory cytokines. So it's releasing these chemical mediators in the body that create inflammation. And so over time, what happens is, is that inflammation, if it continues in the body and we don't fix why it's there, reduce the inflammation, get rid of it, it can lead to cancer. It can lead to other chronic diseases. It can lead to things like diabetes. There's all sorts of different links to your pet being overweight. So how do you know your pet's overweight? Because over half of pets are overweight in the US. And so when we see other pets and we're comparing them to our pet, we might think our pet is fine, when in reality, they're actually overweight. So some of the key things that you wanna be doing with your pet at least once a month, I'd say every week, because it can creep up on them, is body condition score your pet. So what does that mean? That means when you look at your pet, do they have a nice tummy tuck from the side? Do they have a nice hourglass shape when you look at them from the top down? If they're solid, there's no shape other than square, that's a problem. They have too much weight on them. And then also when you feel along their side, so feeling along their rib cage, it should feel like running your fingers over your palm. So each little bump is like the rib. And there should be a fleshy covering. However, it shouldn't be squishy. So if you start getting squishy pets, that's a problem because they're getting too heavy. And as I just mentioned, if they're overweight, there's inflammation in their body. There's all sorts of negative reactions that are occurring in their body. And that can lead to cancer over time. The other crazy thing is, is that fat can store this. Can store pesticides, heavy metals. So then what happens? You have a really overweight pet and they go on a weight loss plan. And this can happen with people too. They lose all that weight. What do those fat cells do? They don't necessarily go away, but they shrink. But what was inside those cells? Toxins, pesticides, heavy metals. So now that's in your pet's body. So it's not surrounded by the fat cells, like protecting it. Not necessarily, it's still in there. But we have to look at when we're recommending weight loss plans for especially these overweight pets, how are we detoxing the body? Because all of these heavy metals, all of these pesticides, they're in our environments. We can only control our little micro environment, right? And I definitely get rid of this. It's okay if, you're, if your grass has a few weeds, you know, go out and weed it because it'll help your, it'll benefit your health and your pet's health. So, but things we need to think about that we don't even talk about from a conventional medicine standpoint is how do we detoxify your pet's body, especially if they're losing weight? Who here has ever had a vet talk to them about detoxifying their pet's body, especially if they recommended weight loss? I would just love to hear who's heard that from their vets, like thumbs up, hearts, thumbs down if you haven't. Like that's something we need to be more aware about because we live in an everly increasing toxic world. So that brings me to the point that we were gonna talk about today. What are three supplements that I love using for my patients that have cancer? This can also go along with chronic illness and diseases. Keep in mind when I talk about these, so when we're mentioning supplements, your diet is always the foundation for health. And so if the diet's not right, we can't supplement to fix the diet. We can over supplement and cause other issues, 
So keep that in mind. I find a lot of people like we freak out when we get a cancer diagnosis. And what's incredible is we, we need to do something about it, right? We like, we get a diagnosis, same for ourselves, hopefully. Um, if you do ever, hopefully you never get diagnosed with cancer, but we want to do something. We need to feel like we're doing something. And what most pet parents will do is they will actually over supplement. So they, they go on Google, they find everything, right? Cause there's so much information out there. They're like, oh my gosh, so I need to start green tea. I need to start ashwagandha. I need to start CBD. I need to start fish oil. I need to start vitamin D. I need to start vitamin C. I need to start vitamin A. Like the list goes on. However, we can cause a lot of damage and harm to your pets and we can over supplement. So if your pet has something going on, if they're on drugs, make sure you're working with a veterinarian to make sure that those supplements are right for your pet before you go and spend like $500. So awesome, love that. So mention for detoxification, homeopathic vet prescribed phosphorus. Yes, and with homeopathic, they're looking at the individual pet, which is the difference between conventional and Western. So rather than just blanket treating everyone like we tend to with conventional medicine, we look at that pet, we look at their symptoms, we look at who they are and figure out what are the best treatment options for that individual. So the supplements are the same. Not every pet's going to get the same supplements. Same with herbal medicine. We use herbs all the time. So the first one that I really like, and I'm going to show you a bottle, and I don't want you to go and buy this bottle for your pets. It is a human one, but I wanted to show you the brand because I love this brand. So I'm going to cover part of it. So I don't know if you guys can see this. So Nordic Naturals is a fish oil brand that is amazing. They're fantastic. They have a human side, they have a pet side. So you want to use the pet side. I covered this because this also comes with vitamin D. So I use this for myself. Now here's the flip side of that. So fish oils, omega-3 fatty acids do amazing things in the body. And most pets are low in omega-3s. So they have what we have, what we talk about is an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. And most pets, especially if they're on a kibble-based diet, they're gonna be higher in omega-6s. Omega-6s are not bad. So a lot of people be like, I have to get rid of all omega-6s. No, they have a place, they're necessary in the body, but what happens is, is when that ratio is off, we have more of a pro-inflammatory state. So if omega-6s are really high, your omega-3s are really low, that can increase inflammation. Um, so what we do is we want more of a one-to-one -one ratio when we're talking about cancer patients. And so we bring down the omega-6s, usually through diet, nutrition, so getting them off a kibble diet, transitioning onto a home-cooked diet or a raw diet, and then we increase the omega-3s. So if you've ever had a dry dog, start omega-3s. So start with your usually cold water fishes, fishes, fish are going to be better uh, source that are more utilized by the body. And so with this, I think this is anchovies and sardines. So those are your cold water fish. They're going to be higher concentrates of omega-3s. They're more bioavailable, meaning they're absorbed by the body versus your plant-based or krill or algae. So krill, algae, they're not as bioavailable. You can still utilize them. There's still a place for them, but we have to keep that in mind. We may need to do a higher dosage of them. And so when we supplement these, what we're doing is we're reducing inflammation. So we use omega-3s for inflammatory disorders, cancer patients, our osteoarthritis patients, heart disease, kidney disease. There are so many places for omega-3s. And so some pets, they don't tolerate it very well. And that can be related to their digestive tract is weak. They could have leaky gut. It could also be related to the product that you're using because there's different forms of fish oil. And a lot of companies have poor quality fish oils that are actually rancid. That's crazy, right? So rancid meaning it's off. Have you ever had a bag of dog food that just smell like it smells weird? And you're like, there's something wrong here. Like there's, this isn't normal. I don't trust this. What it is, the fish oils that they added 
they've oxidized, they're rancid. That's the smell that you're most likely getting when you smell that. If you open a bag of food or it's been open for a while, because they go off really fast. So you can't tell if the fish oil is in a gel capsule. So that's something to be aware of. However, you're, these are really good. So the, the D that's on here, so vitamin D, let's talk about that really quickly. Most pets that have cancer are low in vitamin D. That doesn't mean you should start supplementing because we can actually create a lot of issues if your pet's fine with vitamin D and we start supplementing with vitamin D. So it's very different from humans. We can create a lot of problems, but there's a blood test. You can ask your veterinarian to test for vitamin D. And I highly recommend that, especially if you have a pet that has cancer, make sure you're testing for vitamin D because if it's low, we need to supplement for it and it's gonna improve their immune system. It's gonna improve the treatment outcomes. It improves their overall health. So that's something to be aware of. Now don't supplement unless you know that they're low in vitamin D. So don't use the Nordic naturals or fish oils that have vitamin D in it. Those are your, your human brands. They're separate vitamin D pet sources that we can use once we know that your pet is truly low. So number one, first supplement. Omega-3s, get them on it. Number two, Cure Pro. So this is a curcumin product. So who here has heard of curcumin? Or turmeric, maybe? So turmeric, curcumin is in turmeric. Turmeric is the yellow spice that you find in Indian food. So what a lot of people will do is they know or they read about curcumin being amazing and it truly is like it's and there's so much research out there on how it reduces inflammation it has anti-cancer uh, results to by acting on different pathways in the body and the thing is though is that most people will just add the spice into the food now when we do that and we're just adding the spice into the food we're actually it's not high enough in concentration we also need to make sure there are certain fats that increase the absorption. There's a lot of different things that go into making curcumin be absorbed and effective into the body. So I don't necessarily, you can add the spice in, it's fine. It doesn't tend to taste the best for pets. So sometimes what happens is, especially if we're using herbs and other supplements, we can put them off their food. So I recommend getting a high quality curcumin supplement that has a lot of research behind it, that is coupled with the things that make it more better bioavailable, better absorbed by the body. And keeping in mind too, there's different forms of curcumin that are warming, cooling, more neutral to the body. So if we're dealing with a really hot patient, so lots of inflammation, they overheat really easily. This comes into Chinese medicine where we would go through all that, see, okay, we need to use more cooling substances, cooling foods, cooling herbs, uh, cooling supplements. And if we're using a hot form of curcumin, we can overheat them even more. And that's where you can get side effects. Or if we're using forms that aren't well absorbed, we can actually create more leaky gut in the body and create inflammation and we can see diarrhea. Or if we're not using the right dosages, we can create diarrhea also. So I like Cure Pro because there's a lot of research behind it. There are different size dosages too. I have this on, I think it's my blog post, the top things to supplement all, I can't remember the exact title of it, but we have Cure Pro in that link where you can link to it to purchase it. Um, you do wanna make sure that you're working with someone just so you can get the proper dosages. But I love curcumin for my cancer patients. Third, you hear me talk about this one a lot. So this is CBD. So I, I use Vet CS. I love their products. I love their company. They're fantastic. It's organic. I know what concentration. So see that five, I think this one's 500 mg per mil. So 500 mg per mil. And then I can also tell that there's 1500 milligrams of CBD in this bottle. That is a high, higher concentrated bottle. A lot of them have less in it. And that's fine, especially for treating cats or small dogs. The dosage is going to be lower. 
there are different dosages of CBD for pets depending on what we're treating. It's not just like most bottles will have on there, like this one, less than 10 pounds, five drops twice a day. So what I do is remember it's individualized medicine. So we're looking at the pet. What are we treating? Are we treating inflammation? Are we treating anxiety? Or are we treating for cancer? And we can change the dosages based on that because there's more studies that are coming out. There's not a ton, unfortunately, because it's still illegal at a federal level. Um, but CSU has done quite a few studies with epilepsy, so seizures, and then also with osteoarthritis. So we can base it off of that. And then a lot of case studies, which is great. So there's a lot more coming out that we can utilize. So I definitely, CBD, there is a place. If your pet's on steroids, which a lot of pets are for cancer treatment, you need to make sure that you're working with someone because especially if they're having seizures, they're on seizure medications, we, CBD is safe. However, what happens is, is we can get side effects from other drugs or wrong dosages. And what it does is it can interact with these prednisone, anti-seizure medications, and it changes the way that those drugs are metabolized. So then what happens is, is that drug, there can be too much of it in the body, and that's where we see side effects. So make sure you're checking with someone that knows what they're doing with that to ensure that we're not gonna create problems because if we're treating cancer, we don't need any more problems, right? So those are the three supplements. So omega-3s, omega-3 fatty acids, so fish oils. Little tip here, coconut oil is not an omega-3. So I commonly find that people will supplement coconut oil and think that it's an omega-3. It is not, it's a medium chain triglyceride. It does many amazing things in the body too. So you can still supplement that alongside your omega-3 fatty acids. So I just wanted to make that disclaimer because I find a lot of people think that they're doing the omega-3s, but they're not. So then your curcumins, so Cure Pro is a great product, and then your CBD. Um, so there's lots of other ones too. I mentioned vitamin D, but making sure you're testing for it. All right, I see a few of you guys here. Any questions about cancer supplements, cancer in general, anything that your pets may be dealing with? We've got a few minutes and I wanna make sure that I answer your questions. We talked a little bit about detoxifying also. If your pet's on steroids, highly recommend milk thistle. So milk thistle is great for protecting the liver, helping the detox pathways. A lot of times it's combined with dandelion root. And as most of us know, dandelion root is a fantastic detox supplement. You can drink dandelion tea. So let's go back to these little guys. Dandelions, right? Like that's what's happening right now. All the dandelions coming out. Guess what happens when we kill off the dandelions? Our bees die. Well, the bees die anyways, because they like, they actually prefer Roundup laced water. How crazy is that? So that's the pesticide glyphosate. So there's been studies where they showcased how they had two sources of water, normal water and glyphosate water. And you know which ones the bees went to? They went to the glyphosate-laced water. That's really scary because then what happened is, is that glyphosate, it affects little bees have little microbiomes, which is amazing to think about. So the bee microbiome, they have gut bacteria. They have good bacteria that helps support their immune systems, the way they metabolize things. And glyphosate, what it does is it attacks those good bacteria and it kills them. That's what it does in our gut health. So when you hear that it's fine, it doesn't affect human health, it actually kills our good bacteria in our microbiome in the gut. And so when we're spraying our yards to get rid of those dandelions, not only are the bees gonna be affected because of the glyphosate killing their microbiome, but dandelions are the first source of food for bees in the spring. And it could be the only source of food for a long time. So when we remove that, we kill off the dandelions because we don't like them. Remember, it's actually, dandelions are a great 
you can take them, dry them out. You can use them in teas. They're actually, they're a medicine. We use it all the time. But when we get rid of them, we get rid of the bees potentially. And what do we need bees for, right? Oh, so what about the bees? We need them to pollinate plants. We need plants to live. So it's, there's a lot of talk about, and it's really scary when you start looking at how affected bees are by what we're doing. Bees are gone, we're gone. It's like plain and simple. Like I get goosebumps saying that because it's, it's so plain and simple. Unfortunately, the solution's not simple. And so, yes, dandelion gravy in my hometown. I love it, Angela. Gravy? Like, did you make gravy? I'd love to hear more about that. Um, but yeah, like we, we tend to like forget the bigger impact that we have on everything. So we talk about pet health and one of, so Morris Animal Foundation, check them out. They did the Lifetime Golden Retriever study that's still going on. And they do a lot of great research with pets and coming up with new drugs. They're actually part of some of the research that's going on to find the coronavirus vaccine through cat studies, so which is really cool. And the, the thing with Morris Animal Foundation, there's a study going on right now. If you go to their website, you'll find it. They're using dogs as a potential indicator for if pets are gonna develop cancer. So going back to these beautiful things, not really, the pesticides. So there are studies that showcase that pets who are more exposed to pesticides, they're more likely to develop bladder tumors. And so Morris Animal Foundation is studying that, the link to pesticides, and they're following the pet parents to see how many of us develop bladder cancer or cancers in general. So there's a lot of interesting things that are going on. Um, we just need to be aware. We need to be smart. We need to think about consequences. There's so many toxins already in the world, so why add more in to our environment? The pesticides stay on the lawn for 48 hours after you apply them. And then you know where they go? They're in the water. They're being flushed down the street. You're walking through that with your pets. You can't see it. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about what we're putting on ourselves, in our house, what our cleaning products are. What are the foods? The pet food industry, we talk about that a lot and that's really messed up. So some food for thought on this Saturday morning. I appreciate all of you for jumping on and being here to hear about health and our pets, get an update on coronavirus. There's no changes with the pet health, which is good. Um, we're not seeing any pets get sick from it or pass it back into people. Talked about three supplements. So your omega-3 fatty acids, your curcumin products, your CBD, and then how pesticides are affecting health along with obesity and how obesity how your, ex, your fat can store pesticides, heavy metals. So thinking about detoxifying as we're getting those pets to lose weight. If you need help with any of that, I'm here for you. You know you can find me at thenaturalpetdoctor.com. We do phone consultations if you're not in the Northern Colorado area. If you're in the Northern Colorado area, book a house consultation. I'd love to meet you and your pets and help them through acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, nutrition. We have nutritional plans that anyone can take advantage of. So reach out if you have questions. And we will see you next week on COVID Critters and Coffee, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. See you guys here for our weekly Doc is In. If you have questions you want me to answer, you can send them ahead of time or you can post them on Facebook or Instagram. Make sure you hit that follow button so you don't miss out and subscribe to our weekly newsletter so you can get more free tips on pet health from a holistic perspective. Have an amazing weekend. Get out and enjoy that sun. Get some vitamin D into you guys and take care. This is Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor.
Hey, pet parents, it's Dr. Katie. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, can you do me two simple favors? Number one, share it with someone else. And number two, subscribe to this channel by clicking down below so you can continue to get updates every time I release new videos to help your pet thrive. Also, if you're wondering how your pet can achieve optimal health and listening to our videos made you wonder if this can work for your pet, we have an amazing membership site that can really help your pet thrive naturally by being a part of our incredible community of pet parents like yourself. Maybe you're here because you're tired of not having other options to help your pet live their best life and feel amazing. Or maybe you're here because you feel alone in figuring out how to help your pet holistically. Let's partner together today and take the worry out of caring for your pet so you have many more days to share the joy and love with them. Click the link below to grab a two-week free trial in our Healthy Paws membership. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, remember you're not alone in helping your pet thrive naturally and live each day to their fullest potential.